So how you doing? I've been down here, you know, dealing with some flood damage. But I had an idea. Uh, it's a subject that I have not talked about and I've been meaning to for a long time. I want to talk about bearings. And there's kind of different, there's different levels of bearing failure. So I just kind of want to discuss that a little. Some of this you can only hear. Like this one, you can hear it. Listen, listen close. Now listen to this one. It's not as bad. So whenever you start having bearing failure, that's going to be basically the first stage, the first stage of your failure. And really the only way to know is to have the bearing out and, you know, spin it and listen. That's the only way to really know. But then I want to show you a good bearing. Okay. So listen to this. It's, it's completely silent. You can't hear anything. Um, these here, you can feel the vibration in your fingers. This one here, nothing. It's smooth as silk. You can't, can't feel anything. Now, if you're working on your saw, here, let me grab this. Or it, it, say you're working on your saw and you can grab a hold of your crankshaft, wiggle it pull on it, all that stuff. You should just barely be able to sense movement. Just barely. Okay. If you can visibly see that thing moving, your bearing is completely gone. It's past this point. But if you can see the movement, you're well past that point of needing replaced. Um, one of the issues you'll have is it'll it'll take out your seal as well along with it um now i want to give you kind of a simple example of what happens when your bearing fails and i've been thinking about this for a little while and i think the best way is to use a drill um so imagine if you took a bit stuck it in your drill Tighten it down, nice and snug. What happens when you turn it on? <laughs> Nothing happens, right? But imagine if I would loosen this up enough to have play, what's gonna happen? I pick up a I pick up a vibration, don't I? The whole drill, everything starts to vibrate. Um It's I know it's it's not a perfect example, but I think it's a it gives you an idea of what happens when your bearing fails. Uh, you'll get play in there and the crankshaft will start to get a wiggle on it. And once you start to get that wiggle, it will transfer that energy throughout the whole saw and cause all sorts of problems. You'll lose power um, and it's just everything. Uh, you can even have such a vibration to where 
like if the crankshaft has enough play in it, it could potentially go to one side and as it rotates around, open up an air leak around that seal because it won't be centered anymore. It'll be off to off centered. So as it rotates around, it'll it, it could potentially give you an air leak. You know what I mean? Because it's off centered. They're only a few thousand smaller than the the seal is only a few thousand smaller than the crankshafts itself. So if it you have enough play, you can potentially open up an air leak around that crankshaft in that vibration. Um, but that energy will transfer all the way up through your piston and everything. But I just I thought I'd touch on that subject briefly. It's one subject that I feel isn't discussed enough. Uh, a bearing failure will create a cascading event. It'll cause it, it, it'll cause more problems down the line. Uh, you can get a vibration and have it start breaking gaskets and seals loose. You know, you know vibrations will cause all sorts of issues. An update on the pulling, uh, the pulling 245A that uh, we're working on for Simple Man. Uh, it's not much of an update. We are still waiting on parts. I still haven't received notice that they've been shipped yet. Uh, they're waiting for... I think they're waiting for the manufacturer to get them to them. I've been ordering from them for a long time. This is the first time I've run into an issue like this. So I think it's a manufacturer problem or shipping issue or something. But we're just, we're still waiting on the seal. Now the basement, boy, it's, the walls are bleeding with moisture so even though the water is drained out of the basement it's just I, it, I'm having a hard time getting it dried out right now because there's just there's so much moisture just seeping through the walls um, you know what I mean I didn't cause it much damage to stuff because I didn't have much down here to begin with and the stuff that I did have down here was already most of it was up on shelves so I really didn't have to throw much away but, so, it didn't really cause much issue with the saws. I did lift them up, though. Uh, I'm going to build some shelving. Just lumber prices, you know. I, just, I have a hard time spending that money right now on the, because of the lumber pricing. But I did pick them all up. Take a look. It looks kind of ridiculous right now. Look at this. Look at this mess. Saws everywhere. Look at that. This is laying everywhere. Then there's this shelf over here. It's too deep. Two saws deep. They're stacked up. got some spare parts down there still got a couple here on the floor I gotta take care of but yeah makes for an interesting situation that table is starting to sag a little bit not much it's holding up I thought it was funny that these bars, every time I see these bars and stuff on the videos, I'm like, you guys just can't see how many there are there. Look at this. Look how thick it's stacked. Like, these are the 16s or 18s here. It's as thick as my hand. There's a lot of bars there. These are all 20s. See that? Oh, you see this one? This bar right here? 
you ever have your chance to pick one up, don't. Uh, you're better off to go with this. Uh, I've used both, and I will tell you, you're much better off to use that one. I still got bars laying here. I mean, look at the zip back there. There's that C52. There's an XL12. It runs. That's running XL12 stuff back here in the bottom. The Lombard. That's all starting to get some. That's all famous on this channel. That thing is eating a lot of wood on this channel. What's that? An XL12 with a bow bar. The Husqvarna 50 sitting there. What's that? The XL12. That's another XL12. There's a super easy behind it. There's another long bar sitting, hiding. That's all there is an XL2. It's currently tore apart. We're getting we're gonna port it. The Pro Max 610. We ran that once or twice. There's the 1010. I've been working on getting some parts gathered up for that guy. My full wrap Super XL Auto. Look at that. Hiding in there. My 1050. That's my 923 there. My 925 with a full wrap bar. A couple of axes sitting here in the way. What else we got back here? Super 2s. There's two Super 2s back here. This is an XL101. I got plans for that one. My XL400 up there. My 360 is just sitting here. That's a project I got to get finished. There's my XL870. Super easy. Here's another Super XL130. This one's a chain break model. See? We got a chain break on this one. One of my favorites is right here. The XL700. Back there, you see that sitting down there in the bottom? That's a 925 sitting there. There's a 903 sitting up there. I haven't identified this one yet. I think it's an 850 or something, somewhere in that area. An XL 850. I think it's somewhere in that area. There's the Home Light 340 waiting. He needs needs spark fixed on that one. Here's my one of my Super XL autos. This is the one that has the uh, three quarter wrap handlebar. That's just parts laying there. Here's our Super XL auto that we ported and we've been running all this time. That's it right there. That's box of stuff is 372, the Husqvarna 372 that we gotta get finished. A nice big old bag of trash. <laughs> Actually, I threw this chain away today. I don't. It's it, it's rare that I. It's rare. It's rare that I throw a chain away. But there's not much left of them, so I figured why not. Back here in the corner is another zip. Those two saws sitting next to each other are XL12s. The one in the back is a 240. That's that pulling. I can't remember what kind of pulling it is. Another Super 2. Another Super Easy. Another XL12 hiding down here. I got a VI-130 sitting here somewhere. You know? 
but I think I need to build some shelves. I think I want to pull the tables down and put in like bookshelves. But part of me would like to move into a shed because of when this happens, you know, it's a pain in the butt. But then part of me is like, you know, do I want to? I did price it. It's it's three thousand for the shed. Um, but that's without prepping the ground. The ground's at a slope, and I don't know. I don't know how many ton of a stone that'll take to get it leveled out. I could dig it out and then put stone on it. I don't know. But the shed itself is three grand. I just got to figure out the rest of it if I go that far. But I just, I chimed in today because I wanted, really wanted to have that bearing discussion. Just be careful because a, a bearing will rob performance really quick. Actually, speaking of a bearing, that Porter Super XL Auto we got here. It's got a bearing issue here on the flywheel side. I was running the saw one day and I could hear it, but I couldn't hear it with my earplugs in. So I just happened to have it started without my earplugs in and I could hear the noise. Now, I'm going to bring the clamor up close here and let's see if you can hear it because I can wiggle this and you can actually hear the stuff in there moving. Try not to get this thing too close, huh? So I'm going to try to get this to where you can hear it. Can you hear it? It's in there wiggling. Now this saw we're giving away. So, could you hear it? We're giving this saw away. So I'm gonna have to fix that before I can give it away. You know? Uh, it's not a big deal. I can tear this thing down blindfolded. So, and I'm not kidding. I could. <laughs> but yeah, we'll fix that bearing. We'll get it up, fixed up right for the next owner. We'll put a new bearing in there. And uh, we'll sort that out. Now, a little update on the giveaway, though. I'm starting to move towards like a like a charity giveaway I guess you call it but you don't have to donate money um, I'm trying to come up with a system to where when we're gonna hit a thousand subs or it's coming up soon so whenever we hit a thousand subs we're gonna start a giveaway for this saw but to get the saw you have to do but I'm not saying donate money to a charity if you want to do that do it I'm saying help a friend help your neighbor carry the groceries in anything do something for someone else as a favor or, or help them or whatever nothing in return but what I'm going to have you, I think what I'm going to have you, everybody do, is I'm going to have everybody do a random act of kindness. So if you want to donate to a charity, feel free. But I'm looking for a random act of kindness. And whenever you do that, you're going to post random act of kindness and your name will be put into the lottery for this song. It's as simple as that. 
uh, help somebody carry their groceries in, help them mow the grass, do some weed eating, help with their dishes, I don't care. Whatever it is, just help somebody. Give them a random act of kindness, anything. Whenever you do it, post in a comment, random act of kindness, and I will put you in the lottery to win this saw. That's it. We're going to start that process whenever I hit a thousand subs. But but I think I think that's the, the the way I want to handle this saw giveaway. I just I want I want I want everybody to earn it through a random act of kindness of any sort whatsoever. Uh, I will trust you completely. Just we'll keep it going for a month or two or whatever. And whenever your deed is done and the lottery is full, we'll go ahead, we'll pull up all the names, we'll pick a winner, and we will send them this saw. It's as simple as that. You know? Uh, you want to go help your neighbor cut some firewood? Post in the comments, random act of kindness. Uh, it's as simple as that. I want to encourage folks to do such things you know to help one another but i'm not going to officially start it until a thousand subscribers i will post a video dedicated to the start of the lottery to win this saw uh you post your comment random act of kindness and i will reply um, if, if you don't get a reply to, if you don't get a reply from me, keep posting it until you get a reply from me and I'll end up assigning you a number or something. So you're going to need that number in order to confirm that you're in the lottery. So keep replying until I answer you or send me an email or something. But so far I have answered every, just about every single comment that I've received. Um. But I think I'm going to call it that for today, and we'll catch you on the next one. Alrighty, later.